I do what I want to. That's not how this works. <laughs> That's exactly how this works now. Just because you're a lawyer and can tell me that you can do what you want, crap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're the only person that can do is like, I can do what I want as long as it's legal. I'm like, you can. Damn it. Stop me, motherfucker. <laughs> I would, but I think you can sue me for stopping you. I know it is my right to do this. It's in the consta law. I said, I read your code of conduct. I know what your policies say, and you have to adhere to them. Actually, I did, does your convention even have a code of conduct? Yes. Oh. Okay, so... <laughs> That's the best of... Does your convention have a code of conduct? Okay, so... So, do you know what that is? That's the noise of my hourly rate going yeah. <laughs> I, I am the worst at that, but before I describe to you what happened to Code of Conduct Year One, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monkey Knife Fight! You all know I am, ladies and gentlemen, Boozy Master! Oh, I'm so amazing. I swear to God, it's like, it sounds like he says Boozy Bastard every time he does this. I say it in the back of my head. I called you Boozy Bannister once while I was drunk. <laughs> but no, I probably did, but the best part is my friend later that night tried to push me down a flight of stairs and I screamed for him. <laughs> Boozy, help me! And like he that. didn't know who you were, so he was like, Jesus, now you're just praying to tequila? <laughs> this sounds like a bad watch of parody. Boozy, help me! No. <laughs> Everybody gets no. Um, uh, first, uh, why are you... I need a lawyer. Why? Uh, I did not beat up a 12-year-old take their lacrosse stick. <laughs> Do not take the lacrosse stick! Lost and found, now! What? Bad dog! What? <laughs> did you... What? That Whose lacrosse stick is that? Uh, I know there's two very angry parents right now talking to the hotel. So Everyone smile and nod, panels, panels and happiness, panels and happiness. Can I get some booze up here in a gun? Yeah, actually we can. Oh, wait, what? How many, how many booze is that going to be? Oh. Uh, this one's for you. I'm going to share, right? Oh my god. So. This one's for Xander. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's for Miko. I'm gonna get so drunk to <laughs> <laughs> And this one's for me. Yes. I need a lawyer, though. Because those parents are probably very mad. What can you pay? Uh, he has a lacrosse stick to portray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Well, I don't have any pockets. Oh, God. oh no, 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 no. You don't you don't understand. Well how much is raccoon pelt worth? Skin him. Woo! How much is raccoon pelt worth? I can endorse you to people. I'll tell you what, tweet a couple more opinions and your follower count will go down a bit. No! <laughs> no! This is why he tried to be the Twitter guy for first squared ah. once, and the entire board of directors not only said no, but then they went Fur would be a better choice. And I went, oh, they went, no! And then that happened. <laughs> Speaking of your Twitter account for First Square, uh, I, I did not know what Culver's was until this weekend. <laughs> I have learned what Culver's is. Welcome to Wisconsin! Yeah! yeah. Oh Wait. my god. Do you know what that is? Jeez, in the cup? Yes, that is the Culver's man. But I, had, I can do better than that. Hey, QM. Busy. Oh, busy with the get wonderful. Thanks for killing the joke, honey. <laughs> Who's this guy? I don't know, but he has alcohol in his hand, so I like him like it fucking automatically. Oh wait, wait, wait. No, the joke's back. <laughs> what did you do? We went to Culver's. Cheeseburg! I'm not gonna die! <laughs> One of these is mine, by the way. I just gotta figure out which one. So what you're saying is I can't afford you right now. Yep, mine's the one with all the meat. Alright. How do you go find a lawyer? <laughs> you're three in the hotel, so... You just walked by one! <laughs> right there. Sure! Let him represent you! Let's see how that goes. Oh, wait, you represent me. 
I'll represent you, absolutely. I'm going to see how long I can keep you in jail. Oh, don't worry. You'll like jail. I am not saying the first thing that comes to my mind. That's a first. That is rather intimidating. That is either like the most intimidating or the sexiest thing. Have you tried my brew yet? Said the man in uniform with the flask. From my family's distillery in Scotland. I like it much more now. Come here. The Isle of Sky, Callister, Storm. Somebody just had their retainer wave. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't include the $200 bottle I have in my room. <laughs> Will you adopt me? <laughs> Security, I'm about to give you a room number. There's a bottle of mine in there. Uh, no. No. Now, oh, you're getting laid. Now, you, you brought something from your family's distillery. I think it's only fine that I uh, give you a sip of this wonderful, wonderful liquor that my grandfather founded. Great, great. Yeah. I, it, it sucks to suck too well. Yeah. It'll go ahead and try it. It's an old family it. recipe. It was made by my grandfather, Calico Jack. <laughs> Ooh, that's sweet. That's sweet, I like. I like like the five people in the room who realize I just gave him rock gut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything I, sweet is rock gut. That's why I give it to them. I've never had whiskeys before, so I got to find out from them if this is the good stuff or not. It's good. <laughs> oh. That that really is a problem in the furry fandom because I've been doing this for quite some time. People know that I like to drink, and I have made it very clear. It's like, oh, I like to drink. The sweet stuff isn't really my style. And then they found out that apple pie can be made at home. Yes. <laughs> Let me tell you this. I used to make apple pie. I would put a little bit of sugar into the cider, a little bit of brown sugar, lots of spices, and Jesus Christ ever clear. And they said, we could improve on that recipe, and all of a sudden, Domino sugar trucks are pouring into their kitchen, going down a ramp and into a pot, and they're just like the witches from Hamlet. Devil, devil, boil in trouble! Diabetes burns in bubbles! What did I, I said Hamlet, didn't I? I suck at this. The one time, I believe it was Odie, are you in here? Yes. Odie makes, I will admit, it is a fantastic apple pie, but every time he made it, he was like, you know what that was missing? More sugar. He gave me frosting. <laughs> there was so much sugar in this drink when he poured it, it was viscous. Oh. I was like, all right, this might kill me, but I have to try it. And you know what it tasted like? Sugar. Not only it, it's like if the Keebler Elves came Everclear. <laughs> I love it. You know, the funny thing is, is there's a drop down. <laughs> I hate you so much. You know what I love? I, I love the fact that Uncle Kage got invited to a convention in Australia, and I'm at the convention in fucking Milwaukee. <laughs> what did you do? I'm living the high life. Oh. The top end of pennies? <laughs> oh my god! And for everybody's knowledge, it's forty dollars worth of pennies to fill a top hat. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> look at these generous people around oh, the <laughs> This is this is wonderful. This is like you know how you joke that like you take the charity money back to your room and roll around on it? I kind of want to see you do it with the pennies now. <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine that? Well, like he and Xander go to bed tonight. Xander wakes up in the morning, his ass cracks filled with pennies. <laughs> he puts on the first suit, pennies <laughs> roll across the floor. You you need to understand. Not all banks take change, loose change anymore. Well, good, because they brought us coin tubes, too. <laughs> yeah, I saw that, and I really appreciate it. Uh, I had an incident. Uh, the bank, the bank that we use for this convention is right by my house. And um, one year, 
it wasn't so much that we went overboard, but things had happened, and we were more than fine on funds. But the problem was there were enough checks out there that all the cash that was collected that weekend needed to be in the bank on Monday. So we packed up the truck, drove back to Chicago, unpacked the truck, went and got the rest of our errands done, and I have an hour left. I have been home for the first time in five days. I had just run a convention. My eyes were bleeding with joy and pain. <laughs> and fur, because you guys really need to brush out those suits and I might be allergic to you. <laughs> so I, as quickly as I could, ran into my house, threw money down in the tip. If anyone would have walked back to my house, a nice little old woman looked in like, I'm going to rob him. <laughs> well, I came down to the wire. I had ten minutes to drive two blocks. I didn't have time to change. Oh, gosh. So I went to the bank in sweats, a ripped t-shirt, <laughs> hair askew, swerving into the parking lot because I was so tired, with over $15,000 in a brown paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk into the bank looking like this, just disheveled. You probably thought you were selling drugs. No, they knew it because they called the cops. <laughs> So I'm standing at the counter, and they are taking, like, they should be closed now. I made it. They should be closed, but they're really taking their time. They're throwing bills through the machine, and in walk, two uniformed police officers. Like, sir, can we have a dog with you? I'm like, why would you? Son of a bitch. <laughs> I run a convention, like, sir, uh, we're going to need to, would you mind coming to my car? I can prove to you I run a convention. Like, okay. <laughs> So they walked to the car, where I had all of my paperwork, and Xander's inside-out blue dragon fursuit in the truck. Now I was describing to them what the paperwork was, but they did not hear anything. And one of them, very politely, but with concern, stopped me and said, Sir, what happened to your dog? <laughs> a suit to the bank when I go with the paper bag, but I do write on the paper bag, not for drugs. <laughs> I love it. You know, the best thing, it, it, what, sir, what happened to your dog, not too long ago, I was in a car accident. Um, I, I rammed into the back of an F-350 that stopped very, very suddenly in front of me. I yelled, Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> Jesus is a shitty driver. <laughs> I believe the stigmata may have just had his hand sliding around, he couldn't get a grip, I'm not sure. Long story short, uh, the car in front of me had truck nuts, I castrated it, I broke my hip. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I should say with the first thing, I neutered it. Um, but I'm talking about this on Twitter. The reason I'm talking about it is my, my lovely spouse, quotation marks, had to go clean my vehicle out. I live in a town with four police officers. I had been returning from MFF uh, about a week before. In the trunk of my car was a giant cartoon badger head. <laughs> quotation marks is cleaning out the car. And as they grab my files and such from the trunk, they balance on top of it the giant cartoon badger hat <laughs> and walk from the impound lot to their vehicle, which is right next to a four-lane road. Oh, boy. We almost caused an accident <laughs> because somebody looked over and saw a giant badger head floating through the air. <laughs> Now, I live in a small town outside of Philadelphia, and we have four police officers, and I know all four of them. One of them, before impounding my car, did what's called an inventory search. It's where they go through the vehicle, they make an inventory list of everything that's in it. The idea is if you go to your car later and you say something like, the briefcase full of money is missing, they can pull out the inventory list and say, there was no briefcase full of money when we inventoried the vehicle. 
Remember how I mentioned there was a giant cartoon badger head in the trunk? One of those four officers knows about it now. And I know this because the week after I returned to the office, I had to give a statement on a police report for one of my clients, and the officer who responded was the officer who did the inventory. So there we are in my law office, both of us trying to intentionally avoid talking about the fact that there was a giant badger head in my trunk. And he says, did you get everything out of the trunk okay? And I say, yes. Now, I posted something to Twitter about how uncomfortable that situation is, and the best response that I got was the tale of a gentleman who was returning from Anthrocon, and somebody slammed into his car and it flipped. He was uninjured, thankfully. Uh, but he had a fursuit tail in the vehicle that apparently looked very realistic because as he stood there by the roadside, a sobbing state trooper walked up to him holding the tail and said, we can't find the rest of your dog. <laughs> explain to the police officer what it was, because he's nicer than I am, because I would have gone, oh god, no, mommy! <laughs> <laughs> Whatever shall I do? <laughs> there, uh, there was a gentleman who had to take a bus trip from one of our conventions. Uh, he became incredibly intoxicated, needed fluids, and when they put him in the ambulance, they informed him that they would be cutting him out of his fursuit. <coughs> oh! <laughs> And he was telling them that his insurance wouldn't cover his like, sir, this is an emergency. Uh, he was actually referring to the fear that his insurance would not cover his fursuit. Because <laughs> he did not care about his own life. He cared about <laughs> his fursuit. fursuit. <laughs> Guys! <laughs> no! I, I have very recently gotten a, uh, a furry client referred to me through the fandom. And it ended up being in a bankruptcy matter. And let me tell you, you, you have to like report property on bankruptcy schedules to the court, and then you claim oh, no. exemptions against them. Oh, no. Them. Oh, God. Don't you want to know how awkward it is to explain to your paralegal how we need to classify a fursuit on a report to the federal district courts? I think what we went with was full body masked sleepwear. <laughs> because the exemption for clothing is higher than the exemption for collectibles. But just to clarify this, there was a time in the last month where a law office was going, huh, what do we phrase the giant fox ads? Sexy? Yeah. That's the way to go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, no, what does the fox say? Uh, what does the fox say? Guilty. In this case, I'm sorry, I can't pay my bill. <laughs> what does the fox say? Homeless, homeless. <laughs> <laughs> it, is, it is wild. Uh, because a lot of people make that old jokes like, oh, he couldn't afford this, but he bought a fursuit. It's like, no, no, no. That's not where it gets bad. It gets bad when they can afford it, and I have to ask them, and Huskoon's out of the room, guys, you have disposable income. There's things to do in the world. How many suits do you want staring at you at night when you're asleep? Oh, I'm assuming that's what... Somebody just held up ten fingers in the back of the room. <laughs> if he was in suit, he'd have only held up eight. <laughs> Like, like, have you guys ever seen the picture? Because uh, uh, you all know Foxamore. Foxamore does not get home very often. Uh, he sent a, a tweet out recently of finally being home. And the tweet was him laying in bed like that classic picture. It's just my cane. I was just worried it was another one of these lights. <laughs> Stop destroying my hotel! <laughs> he sent out a picture, you know, the classic uh, vacation picture, camera, you can see their feet and you see in front of them, and all he had was a shelving unit of like 40 foxes. And it was like, oh, that's so adorable, but that's not how I saw it. How I saw it was, you are laying in your bed. 
That means when you sleep, there are 40 lifeless, eyed fox plushies staring at you. And you know how I know that's creepy? Because when I go to work sometimes, especially during Easter, they glue peeps to my desk staring at me while I work. And that is fucking creepy. No. And tasty. <laughs> that, that, you see, he, he's going, oh, it's creepy they're watching you sleep. And I'm thinking, you know, people do other things in their bed. <laughs> Eat pizza. Think about 40 bucks plushies staring at you as you pleasure yourself. Okay. There's you. a drop down on FA for that. And I think this time it's real. Now the question is, is that creepy or is that motivation? <laughs> okay, hold on. We, we know the odds. Even in the furry bed, at least one of those boxes has to be straight. <laughs> so that box is totally disturbed by this. <laughs> you know a straight box? Okay, so you don't actually exist. I'm a <laughs> What? Did you just raise your hand? Are you claiming to be a straight box? Okay, people pointing at someone being a straight box is more believable than, Hey! <laughs> I'm not gay! If you want to prove me wrong, 212. <laughs> Somebody actually accused me of that once in my life. I was playing Nero, the LARP I play, and I used to run the tavern. And a gentleman named Chris, he was helping me out in the kitchen, just stopped what he was doing. He's like, you know, I've always wanted to ask you, do you pretend to be gay to get chicks? What? And I looked at her and was like, what would make you think that? She's like, every sexy girl who plays Nero is your friend. I'm like, yeah, because I'm not trying to fuck him. And he went, that's what I'm doing wrong! <laughs> yeah, now we're, we're joking about foxes, uh, and, and yes, I know that's a stereotype. Stereotypes are bad. Yeah. There's some truth behind some stereotypes. <laughs> yeah, there is. As I learned in the lead-up to Midwest Fur Fest. Somebody sent me a link about two weeks prior to Midwest Fur Fest. That link went to a Google Doc sign-up sheet. That Google Doc sign-up sheet led to a picture of a gentleman in a fox suit doing some very unfamily friendly things. Which then read, if you would like to meet up with me at Midwest Fur Fest, Put your name, room number, and time below. Uh -huh. Now, Hold on, he had a sign-up sheet? Yeah. This <laughs> Artemis has a sign-up sheet! This motherfucker is more organized than 90% of the con staff. Because he wasn't only advertising, he was scheduling. Weeks in advance, so I did the only natural thing I could do. I just copied the link and forwarded it to MFF's legal department because I know their counsel and I'm an asshole. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, that's crazy organization. I'm about to send this guy an invitation to be staff. I need his email address. <laughs> if you're programming director, everything will be more interesting. <laughs> Panel number one, foxes. Panel number two, foxes in boxes. Quotations. Panel number three, cats. Panel number four, different word for cats. Dude, it's, a, it's before 11 a.m. and you're doing adult programs. Like, yeah, you should see after midnight. I, I have to laugh, because this morning uh, somebody told me that Huskoon has like a dozen fursuits. Five. Like, like five fursuits. And, you know, I wasn't aware of this until opening ceremonies here. Because I sat down at opening ceremonies and I hear a voice behind me go, Hey, Gordon. I turn around and it's Huskoon, but it's not. Unless Huskoon's gotten rather large. And I'm confused for a moment, thinking, is he wearing padding? <laughs> and then another Huskoon came and sat down beside that one. And then Sam walked on stage and sat down, and my mind was blown, and I realized that behind me was Pandes and someone else acting like Husku. When I found out today that he had five different fursuits, my immediate reaction was to try to track him down and go, loan me one for this panel. They, have, they all have different names, yeah, too. Because I want Alkali to be on stage, and I'm going to come in that fucking door. <laughs> sit down. Let him think. It's his program. 
and then take the fucking head off and blow his mind. <laughs> <laughs> this, but you know, that would have failed completely because I, I wouldn't have been able to help myself. He would have leaned over. What, is something wrong? The police are at main events. <laughs> the hotel's on the phone. They want to talk to you. <laughs> they said it's important. They've done things like that to me because they know how I react. Dragor has sat me down before. He's like, Uncle, I need you to sit down. We have to talk about something. Oh, oh no, what? It's like, okay. All the charity money in the safe in my room was taken. The safe is gone. I'm like, oh my God. It's like, okay, what actually happened is we broke a light in one of the rooms, but that's not so bad anymore, is it? <laughs> speaking, speaking of charity money, we do this panel for charity. Somebody has given us forty dollars in pennies. I'm gonna get arrested again. Forty. <laughs> guys, I have a wonderful charity money story that involves you. Uh, really quick, guys, just remember one thing: as with all charity panels, if you can give, give. If you can't enjoy the show, we are furries. Somebody in here. That can't do it. Somebody else is going to get forty damn dollars in pennies, so don't worry about it. Guys, I, thank you so much. I have to ask. I am impressed with the dedication for the fucking joke because they not only put forty dollars in pennies in here, they collected and counted out forty dollars in pennies, went and bought a costume top hat, and brought it to this convention, and then carried it in here, guys. I won't even pick up my kids if I'm tired. <laughs> there was a hat box. In, we lost the. We, well, the, you walked by like a room full of cat fursuiters and now they took the box, right? Um, so, MFF this year with you. Okay. We, I was there. We <laughs> do uh, I comedy better when I have a few. There's charity money being collected from a rather large room. Oh, you ass. Uh, after the panel, he's getting set up for something. I go outside for a cigarette and then I go to Con Ops and I'm talking to... Uh, to Mama Sai, Rue from the door size wife. Um, and somebody walks in, looks at me, and goes, Hey, has Alkali gotten a hold of you? I go, No. And well, he was walking around looking for you, and it was, you know, it seemed, he seemed like it was pretty important. So I hop on Telegram because apparently phones only work for Telegram during conventions. <laughs> I wasn't aware of this. And I send a message, I say, What's going on? And he, here's the message I get back. Have you seen the charity money from our panel? No, I've been in con ops. I had to check. And that's it. There's silence. I am now panicking. <laughs> you were panicking! I, so now, it, the happy ending is somebody took it over to charity without telling either of us. But for a split second, his thought process was, did Boozy steal the charity money? <laughs> and my thought process is, I would be the worst criminal mastermind ever if that was the plan. <laughs> what did you do? Well, I debased myself, traveled to several furry conventions, but I made out with the big thousand dollar score in Chicago. <laughs> Time to change my name and move to Jamaica. I was actually at a convention recently in California. They had invited me out to do charity work. Now, um, you notice how this top hat over here is filled with change? And some of you have known me long enough, you see me just absolutely lose my mind when somebody passes my top hat for charity back full of change. The reason for that is, it absolutely destroys the top hat. <laughs> well, this time, I was using one of my newer ones. I figured I'd pick up one for travel. This one had a really cool uh, little hidden side pocket in it. I thought that was really neat. So I have the hat, I'm collecting for charity, the convention ends, I say goodbye to my friends and I head home. And as I'm unpacking my stuff, I take out the hat and I notice the pocket is bulging. <laughs> Somebody had put $400 for charity into the pocket. <laughs> the convention is over, I'm holy. I stole from the puppies! <laughs> I'm calling their convention generally. I took your money! <laughs> How could I get this to you? He's like, dude, just pay it over to us. Don't worry about it at all. And I have a... I hate PayPal. PayPal once, during a convention, 
withheld funds from the convention because it was a PayPal account that was created, a dollar here, a dollar there, and then one weekend, seven thousand dollars. <laughs> and PayPal held on to that money. Like, can I do it any other way? Is there any other way we could do this? So we found this app that I kind of use. He had it. And I transferred over him. App crashes. So now we think we lost four hundred dollars to cyberspace, <laughs> or maybe bought a bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> a week later. He calls me up, like, Alkali, we really need to talk, call me back immediately, it's very hard to get a hold of me. Like, hey dude, what's up? He's like, okay, that time that the cash, the, 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 oh god, I just said its name. The time that the app crashed, did you just like try to resend it through? I'm like, yeah, it was a huge pain in the ass. Did you finally get it? He's like, yeah. Eight times. <laughs> oh my. You need to check your bank account now. <laughs> and I did. I said, all right. How do we deal with this one? And his immediate response was, okay, how many years can we invite you back so that we don't have to give you money? <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm going back the next year <laughs> because I have a credit. <laughs> now, now, before this, we were at ACE together in North Carolina. Uh, that's yeah, ACE. Yeah. I walk into ACE and I keep getting messages from, oh, thank you. I keep getting messages from him that say, when are you getting here, when are you getting here? And I'm thinking, damn you, thirsty ferret, fuck off. <laughs> I get in the door, and there he is, with a Bluetooth boombox huh. and Uncle Kage, oh. playing Careless Whisper. Oh. <laughs> he proceeds to get me drunk. We go up to con suite, and then someone says, Oh my God, the people in the adults only con chat are losing their shit. This is the first time I found out you assholes have adults only telegram channels for cons. I blackmailed my way in. Oh my God. It just kept coming and coming and coming and coming. And That's then, exactly what they were trying to do. And then someone do. posted the next video, and that one kept coming and coming and coming. <laughs> now, the thing is, is I don't think in the deluge of dicks that were flying across my screen, anybody had noticed that little line that says, Boozy B has entered the channel. <laughs> because three minutes and 40 dicks later, I posted one, the one and only message I posted that entire weekend. Hello, it's a pleasure to be in North Carolina, and I've seen all of your penises now at the convention. And the channel went fucking silent. <laughs> so, one gentleman, one gentleman was in that channel and was posting that repeatedly. The next day, I am outside with one of my children, and this gentleman comes over and is playing with my child, with Thomas the Tank Engine, and is very good and sweet and nice to the kid, and I'm thinking, wow, that is so amazing, and then I saw his name tag, and when I saw his name tag, I said, huh, and he walks over a little bit later, he goes, your kids are great, it's a pleasure to meet you, and I, of course, say what any discreet person would say in that circumstance. I shook his hand and said, I've seen your penis. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a moment, and he looks at me and he goes, I didn't think of that. <laughs> I've saved those penises. <laughs> I have labeled them with names. <laughs> if you were at that convention and I run into you this weekend and I look for too long at your tag and then I look to my phone and do this, that is code for I have identified your dick. <laughs> I'm actually glad you said it like that for a second there. I thought you meant you just like randomly named their penises. <laughs> like, this is little Tom. <laughs> He's such a spunky little fucker. <laughs> It'd be better though if like I got a googly eyes app and just started naming them and put them on the edge of the mustache, little monocles. 
go. I can make a comic and put them on adventures. Oh my god, I have a new web feature. <laughs> Dignified dicks of the furry phantom. Oh, oh, what's your mailing list? <laughs> Only you want my mailing list. Boozy. Googly eyes. So I have a story for you. I can't wait to hear the story that goes googly eyes and penises. Um, you've basically just told the story. So, fucking of course I have. I'm going up to my room at the convention. I open the door, and there's my mate, Xander, standing in the large communal area of our room, flexing a pair of googly eyes on a stick. And I have a friend who visits my house. Now, you have to understand, he's at this convention. I don't know if he's in this room, but he is here. And this son of a bitch hides googly eyes all over my house. <laughs> Do you guys know who Trashy McNom Nom is? If you watch the Dragon Show, I have a garbage can in my house that opens automatically. He put googly eyes on it, so we had to name it. I let him stay in my car once at a, uh, when we had to take him to the train station. I let him stay in there for half an hour so he didn't have to deal with the crowds. I came back to the car, 40 googly eyes hidden throughout my car. I was finding them months later. I had to pull down the rear view, or the, 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 the shade, and look in the mirror to make sure I could go into a meeting. Fucking googly eyes staring back at me. <laughs> And apparently, he had been in the room moments before me, while Xander was changing, he went, Hey, Alkali's on his way back up. You wanna fuck with him? <laughs> and he didn't do too small, but they were about this big each. So I came into Babar, the googly-eyed freak dick, and Xander's looking like this, going, Do you love me? Do you? Look into my eyes! when you date a comedian. <laughs> Unfortunately, when a comedian dates a comedian, he tells that shit on stage. <laughs> oh, look, look my eyes. I, I just, I have to say, you're all laughing, but seriously, who among us has not painted their dick like the great one-up mushroom from Mario and played that sound effect in the middle of the night? <laughs> <laughs> You have far too much sex time on your hand. No, I, I didn't have a... Because you don't want to know the amount of time it takes to paint your own penis to look like that mushroom. It takes a while and at least three mirrors. <laughs> Hold on. Doesn't it rub off? <laughs> Only if you're lucky. <laughs> I love you, Culver's. Oh my god, I have not had ice shake in so many years. Oh my god, I have tequila and a shake. <laughs> oh, this does not go well together. Notice it's not stopping him. Dude, did you, they weren't kidding. That Whatever happened in opening ceremonies with Kale Roddy, I didn't, I, I have to admit, guys, most of the time if I'm up here, like, I do improv. Everything I'm doing, I have to think of the next thing. So every once in a while, I'm not quite paying attention to what's going on. And all of a sudden, there was a bunch of booze at opening ceremonies in these really nice, fancy cups. So like, yeah, ale and other words. And I tasted it, and I'm like, no, this isn't bad. This is good ale. After the opening ceremonies, the kale rod, came to me like, I can't believe you kept drinking. I'm like, why? It's like, that's kale ale. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, we put kale in there, so you were that, that weird bitter taste that was all kale. Like, shit, I enjoyed kale. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have to kill myself. <laughs> you, are, you are so lucky that I have almost no follow through on most of the really complex jokes that I plan. At Ace Furcon, there was a gentleman who had printed a hundred buttons that read, Graduate of Crink Kale High. Oh. <laughs> I bought 28 of them. Damn it! <laughs> I bought 28 of them because for square is in February. There are 28 days in February, and I know his home address. 
<laughs> the plan was to mail a button to him every day for 28 days. No explanation, no return address, just the upper left hand corner, badger, and one button in it. Thank God for you. I got home. I sat down. I started labeling envelopes. I got through like five. I'm like, this is too much work. <laughs> I'm just going to bring him to his con. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> They've already been handed out. You son of a shit. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, um... You have to understand, guys, I work at a few conventions now, and I, I love each one of them. And I said this earlier today, each convention is its own entity, it's its own thing. Every convention feels different. That's not just the size of the convention, it's the feel of the con itself. And I truly like to believe that First Squared is basically the retarded stepsons of conventions that everyone just goes, that is amazing. Good work, little Timmy. <laughs> because we have three major meetings throughout the year, and there's a tradition at First Square. One of those meetings is with the board of directors, and it's at my house, and it takes place on a Saturday, and no one is allowed to show up on Saturday. Everyone shows up on Friday. And then things happen. Those things involving smoke, maybe some weeds from my garden. You know, normal shit, normal shit. And we came up with something for our super sponsors one year and had it all planned out until the next morning we went up, woke up and said no. <laughs> but for some reason it came up that you can legally mail a potato through, ma through the U.S. Postal Service. You can put a stamp or multiple stamps onto a potato and just ship it to anyone. And for me, that was the greatest thing I ever heard because I thought it'd be amazing the week before First Square for every super sponsor to get the official First Squared potato. Yes. It would be a potato, it would have an F carved in it, and nothing the fuck else. Because you know what? Some of you guys still live with your parents. And the idea of explaining furry to them is one thing. But if you get mailed a potato with an F carved into it, that's the fucking luck. <laughs> and that was the funniest damn thing we had ever thought of. And we did not have a meeting the next day because we just kept going, we could mail everybody a potato. And then we went grocery shopping. <laughs> I had fries for a week. <laughs> Alkali. I work for the Postal Service. If you, have, if you have any other questions about what you can and can't mail, let me know. Flamethrowers. No. <laughs> wait, well, wait, 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 wait. You're wait. wrong. No. Like Elon Elon Musk no. You can mail flamethrowers as long as there's no fuel with them. Oh, I've got that. <laughs> okay. yeah, I'm just sending. I'm going to send out the official first squared lighter and can of hairspray. <laughs> so you you think it's a bad idea. Oh, we have we have bad ideas. Let me, but let, 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 yeah, let me tell you a story about some of the worst things that I've done. Very recently, a friend of mine got a job. It's his first real legal job, and he's working for a large company and he gets called into a meeting with the vice president of the company and he sent me a message afterwards and it said, I just had a meeting with the vice president of the company and I was very nervous and then I remembered what you told me. In the back of my mind, I'm going, I don't remember telling you shit. <laughs> so I, uh, I ask, I go, oh, uh, what, what was that? He goes, whenever you find somebody who, who you think's in a higher position than you are better than you, just remember, we all jerk off with the same discount grade baby oil. <laughs> we call it jerkins. <laughs> Not even kidding, Xander calls it jerkins. Now, the sad thing about this is he, uh, he insists I told him that, and I said, I don't recall telling you that. It sounds like something I would say, but I don't recall telling you that when did I tell you that? He goes, it was when I was in the job search and really depressed because I had been turned down. I didn't think I'd get a job. And you told me that. 
uh, as, as an example of how I was just as good as anybody else. So there's your tip for the day. If you're ever looking for an uplifting statement about the state of your life, just send me a message and I'll respond with something about masturbation, because that's apparently what I do. <laughs> yeah, I have the chat logs to prove that. Yeah, your chat logs are fucked up, okay? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I get messages from this man in like the middle of the fucking day that are things like, I ate a pizza. <laughs> Followed by, hold on, a long pause, and then, oops, I, I said that wrong, I fucked the pizza. Uh, I use voice to text and I don't like correcting myself. I'm not going to let this piece of shit win. Yeah, I, I can always tell though when he's not using voice to text because every third word is misspelled. Yeah. And it's all in caps. And it's normally things like, I'm gonna suck so much dick. I am. And these are my. The, yes, you have. No, I totally am. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting here like you. I'm sitting here going. I made a joke about. Oh my God, we're all gonna be homeless and have to suck dick to live. And his response, all in camps. I'm gonna suck so much dick. <laughs> I screenshot this shit. I read it to you, except my son's watching my phone. Oh my God, please don't send me a Telegram message while my son's looking at my phone. You're about to grow up really fast. Because I know the address for the not safe for work fur square shit. Oh, I've no. seen most of your dicks. I feel bad for Telegram. But, uh, see, my friend made me get on Telegram, but he left off one important piece of uh, information, is that once you're on Telegram, anyone who's on Telegram and knows who you are knows you're on Telegram. So the first thing he's like, hey, do me a favor, download this, send me a message, I need this info. I'm like, okay, one second, download it, let me type in the message. Bloop, 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 bloop. Motherfucker. <laughs> All right, let's read these. Hey, hi, hey, hi, hi, hey, hi, 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 hey, hi. Guys, write in complete sentences, please. You know what? Hi does not get a response. You didn't get a hi with a smiley face, at least? They don't even give me smiley faces. <laughs> I get two letters and a hand job. I at least want googly eyes. Oh. What would be great is if he had downloaded Telegram and it linked with his contact. And like his mom's in the contact list. Oh. But the little picture is just like a really sexy mouse. <laughs> Woo! Oh god, is his mom in the con- <laughs> <laughs> You sons of bitches! Hi! Hi, 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 hi! Hi, 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 hi! Like, it, it, I'm just watching it, it's all a period of- Hi, 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 hi! <laughs> Too many people know my number. <laughs> Love you too. That's a ridiculous. I am, I am terrified by the concept of Telegram. Uh, so terrified that I actually use a, a uh, voiceover internet number for it before they invent them. And why? Because when I first got the Telegram app at the advice of you guys, I used my regular phone number. And like 10 minutes into having it, there was a message on there, and it was from the senior partner of a law firm in Allentown, Pennsylvania, who was like, oh, hey, I didn't know you used Telegram. We use them in our firm because the messages are encrypted. Apparently, that's a fucking thing. Law firms are using Telegram to communicate with each other. You guys just became a major fucking liability to my career. <laughs> Could you imagine it? Because you don't know how many lawyers have my number in their phone. Could you imagine that shit if I had discovered it? They log in one day, uh, my name pops up, and they go, Huh, why is there a giant fucking badger by this number? <laughs> Good times? <laughs> I mean, maybe, seriously, could you imagine? The, you have to remember that I got out of at work as a furry. Your kid is throwing cell phones and all the normal shit. <laughs> I would love to see a judge on it, though, because I swear to God, if I saw a judge on a furry telegram channel, I'm messaging him. And the message is going to be, a woo notices your objection. <laughs> I would Hello, think would Yolanda. Be, <laughs> I think it would be, I've seen your dick. <laughs> Gavel me, <Yeah>. daddy. Yeah. <laughs> 
You know how Xander painted the first square and dragon show flag? Yes, I'm very aware! It's all over my wall! I need to paint. So, literally, as soon as uh, uh, that was uh, news of that reached the, uh, the public, the immediate reaction uh, in the kale chat was, oh, that's cute, because we had ordered our flags a week before. Well, you should have got Xander to paint them so they could be with you forever. There were about two or three. No kale flags! No! You have to understand, Xander is amazing. He is the greatest person on the planet, but he is a hurricane of destruction in my house. I learned things about cleaning that I never knew before. Do you know what happens when you take hardwood floors and add lube? You get ice skating. Oh my god, no. I have to say, you told me that one time. Yes. One time. Very early on, we're talking on Telegram, he sends me that message. Like a week later, we're streaming for the Extra Life charity. I have a group of furries in my kitchen. We are calling it Basement Con. And in the middle of it, we said, somebody had said something about ice skating. And we said, no, that's what happens at Alkali's house when the drum of loop breaks. As a matter of fact, it is kind of our belief now that the lube has soaked into hardwood floors and carpeting, and they just do drive-by fuckings at this point. They open the front door, slide you in, you glide across the carpet, get fucked in the kitchen, and straight out the back door. In the, in the summer, they turn it into an indoor skating rink for the days of the children. Dude, the Olympics are on. We use it for curling. Curling! But I have to tell you right now, as funny as you guys think that is, and it truly happens, we fall down far too much in my house, nothing, nothing will be as cute as the mysterious trail of lube that literally, like, have you guys ever read Family Circus? I got to follow Xander's trail that day. I don't know. think I ever read that family circus. Well, then you're reading the wrong family circus. Who fucked the dragon? Not me. <laughs> and this is while I was still learning how to clean it up. So I didn't know how to get rid of it. So all I really did was move it around. So my whole house was an ice rink. And I hated it until... Until Xander's cat got the zoomies. <laughs> Because that was the greatest goddamn thing I have ever seen. Is this stupid fucking cat jumping off the table, sliding into a wall and slamming into it, totally unhindered, getting up, doing the dog, finally finding traction, running head first into the couch, and then just stopping and assessing the situation. <laughs> Sitting perfectly still until I stood up because she's very skittish, decided that she would jump onto the couch, but instead did a 180 somersault, face planted into the floor, did this again, jumped into her cat tree, and refused to leave for 24 hours. <laughs> it's like the king version of a Hannah Barbera cartoon. <laughs> Love that cat. Oh, hey, if we're gonna talk about stupid animals, uh, if you ever watch one of my streams, you will occasionally notice a giant black idiot in the background. That is my dog, Trey. Trey has three legs and no brains. They were all in the leg they cut off. When we first got Trey, you used to watch him just hop around, and I was an asshole. We had hardwood floors in the kitchen in a carpeted hallway. Now, he loves me. He loves me so much. He loves me so goddamn much that if my wife tries to, like, rub my back or something to be sweet, he barks and gets between us. I'm his bitch, and he's not shy about that. He would sleep at the end of the hallway. I would stand in the kitchen and call him. I'd watch him gallop, his three-legged gallop down the hallway, hit the hardwood, slide across the floor, and slam right into the wall. Somebody said, you're going to give him brain damage, and I said, no, that ship sailed a while. <laughs> I used to let him out in the backyard in the morning, in that nice fenced-in yard we had that had a couple gopher holes around. And I would watch him hop around the yard, hop around the yard, hop around the yard, and then he'd hit a gopher hole and his front leg would go into it. He was just kind of fucking trying to get out of it. And my wife would come up and say, you need to go out and help him. And I would go, I can't stop laughing long enough. <laughs> the neighborhood kids would chase him and I would scream, stay to the left, he can't turn to the right. <laughs> what the shit, Lana? <laughs> <laughs> but you're a lube cat. Lube cat. Lube cat. 
has now beat that image in my mind of the three-legged dipshit. And by the way, Trey, in case you in case you don't know the meaning of the word, Trey is the word for three in several languages. Because I am the type of asshole who buys a three-legged dog and names it Trey. You are a terrible person. Now, you, one thing before we're done, we have a hypnotist in the audience. And uh, we have decided without consulting him that if you all will donate to charity, we're going to have him hypnotize Alkali. You. No, you. 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 Whoever can finish the drink first, go. Where's Nico? Let me ask you a question. Who would you rather see hypnotized, me or Alkali? Alkali! Therefore, if we get some money for charity, we will ask the hypnotist to come up and hypnotize Alkali if he's willing. We have, we have four minutes to the panel. However, there's nothing in here for half an hour. So, I mean, please don't make me kill myself. I don't know how anything works. Oh, thank you. Yeah, that, that's totally cool. It's like, yeah, you'll probably not die. I need more so, of so, guys? That almost never happens. Would you kindly of my dear? Thank you. That almost never happened. What? They can't make way, you do anything so you don't want somebody to. Somebody told me there was going to be a hypnotist in the audience. Like, that is so cool. I know what's going to happen. And I don't like it. Is this considered hypno-rape? <laughs> you can't do anything in a hypnosis you don't want to do. I am in so much trouble. <laughs> Have you not watched this man do anything? Yeah, exactly. He wants to do everything. As a matter of fact, inhibitions are the only thing that stop him. It's not inhibitions, it's laws. And I'm usually texting you like, can I do this? You're like, Jesus! I'm like, is that a no? Oh, Lord. My high school prom had a well of cast. Absolutely. What do you got? So, it's a pretty mean. Last time I was in the It's my first time. I'm turning 25 on Monday, and so I figured what better way to... Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You picked a wonderful first time. I've got to go listen to the guys talk about hypno-rape. Um, yeah, a little bit of Yeah, he, he actually came up after the last panel, which I had that, uh, that Starbucks, and I looked at it, and I took a sip, and I went, this mocha is terrible, but it has caffeine in it. So after the con, he gave me a memory of the phrase, this mocha is bad, but caffeine. Thank you. Don't you have a dinner I'm going to hang it in my office. Uh, no. <laughs> so guys, um, there are a bunch of 20 sitting at the top of this. Oh house. yeah, you're their hypno bitch now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how, how do he we do this? Do I just everyone. go to sleep? <laughs> Hold on, can I go to sleep? Yes, and then we should do the farm right. upstate. Where you right. uh, there's, oh, there's is there the, a door sign outside the door? There's the slow way, and there's the fast way. Uh, because this, of time constraints and other You're just going to beat me with a cake. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is my normal Saturday night. I'm in. I was like, you like that too much. Anyway, All right. We'll do the medium way. Can we close the door, please? Uh, I don't know what's about to happen. Where am I going? <laughs> oh, I'm sitting right here. Uh, can I drink while we do this? No. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Oh. In all seriousness, I have a degree in hypnotherapy, and I am a trained stage hypnotist. Uh, please don't try this at home without learning just a little bit about it. It is, for the most part, perfectly safe. Um, you're going to see me asking a few questions, because safety is the number one priority when you do this with anyone. And if you go online, you'll see some very sad videos of people who don't do this, and they end up hypnotizing people who end up bouncing off radiators and other very problematic things. So we're not going to do that. Um, several people called out that you can't make anybody do anything in a hypnotic trance that they wouldn't do if they weren't. That's mostly true. Um, the problem is, you have a subject like this, finding something he doesn't want to do. Uh, in any event, hypnosis is safe. It's incredibly useful in all kinds of ways. Uh, I have worked not only with people who just want to do things like habit control and things that you think of normal hypnotists doing, hypnotherapists, but actually even in collusion with 
psychologists and psychotherapists as hypnosis is part of their treatment regimen. It's just incredible, and it does all kinds of great things, and I very much enjoy doing it. I've been studying it for the better part of a decade formally, and more than that, informally. As I said, I do have a degree in certification. I'm actually a member of the Hypnotherapist Union, which is a real thing. Uh, in any event, please watch this. Please enjoy this. Please, if you have questions, please save them for when we're done, because I have kind of a little spiel that I'm going to do, and the questions can kind of interrupt it. And I will be at the con all weekend, and if there's anything I like talking about more than law, it is hypnosis. Anybody is welcome to approach me at any time and ask me any question. And also, I have cards, and I can direct you to other resources. And like I said, I'm an evangelist for this. It makes so many people's lives so much better. That being said... Um, just performance-wise, would you like me down there so you're not facing I think that's I yeah. think that's a good idea, in yeah. fact. That you're you're a big fellow, and <laughs> if, uh, anything if you get uh, you know, normally, by the way, you're not facing away. if you were going to participate in hypnosis, you would not want to be drinking because, believe it or not, alcohol can make it a little harder for some people. Because this is very much a person who's in touch with himself, obviously, in yeah. every sense of the word. Uh, <laughs> it should not be a problem in this instance. I'm going to have you go ahead and sit down, and I do have to ask you a few questions first. Okay. First of all, do you have, and if you don't want to answer this, that's fine, but remember, you asked for this, not me. <laughs> what did that? I told you I was scared of this. There's nothing to be afraid of. That was Absol not convincing. Absolutely not to be afraid of. I assure you. Um, I take this very seriously. I obviously make a lot of jokes, but I take it very seriously. And I would feel terrible if something happened to you. And not only because you're an awesome person, because I don't want to scare anybody. So if that makes you feel any better, I, even if you don't think I care about you, I don't want people to think I'm incompetent. You sold me. All right. right. Now, now we're all on board. Okay, so the first question. Do you have any physical injuries or any chronic conditions like bad neck, bad hip, bad shoulder, anything like that, that if you were to go limp or to roll your eyes, like, you no, know, like if, you, if your neck goes like this, you won't, it won't hurt you or anything like that? Secondly, I'm going to give you the, the very quick version of what hypnosis is. Hypnosis is not sleep, as most people say. We say that. Part of the reason that it works is hypnosis is about suggestion. And you have seen, I'm sure, any number of television shows and movies where somebody in a, you know, in a nice jacket, maybe they had a pocket watch in my bag, um, uh, did it and they did it and then they had sleep in the person like this, right? Yes. We use that because it's a great cultural metaphor. It's not actually sleep. This is what's happening. This is one theory among many. Um, we're starting to learn more about it with functional MRI, but we still, you know, a lot of this is still. You have, you've, already, you've probably heard the saying that you only use 10% of your brain. That's not true at all. You know, biology doesn't waste 90% of you know, a very expensive organ that's eating a lot of energy and calories and taking up space. But can you drive a car? Yes, I can. You remember when you first learned to drive a car? And you were like, oh my god. And you're like, turns in them, turns them up. Remember that? Oh yes. And now, I mean, hopefully, I'm gonna I'm gonna hope here, because I need you to work with me. You probably don't do that anymore. I mean, I'm from Chicago, so I'm not a great <laughs> driver. But you get in your car now and you're more like, I get in my car, I want to go to the store or whatever. You get in your car and you know, you're paying attention, but basically you get in the car and you get out of the car and you're at the store. Yes. Your what's happened is your body, your mind subconsciously has figured out how to drive. So that 90% that allegedly you don't use for anything, that's what's making you drive. That's what's keeping you aware of your surroundings. That's your subconscious mind. It's not a separate personality. It's part of you, which is why, for the most part, you will not do things in hypnosis that you wouldn't do otherwise. It's just the part of you that works when you're not paying attention. The part of you that is paying attention, listening now, is the waking mind, essentially part that's right there. In between the waking mind and the subconscious mind is the critical mind. And the critical mind is the part of your brain that decides what's important enough that the waking mind has to keep track of it and what's not important and it can just go to the subconscious and you know we turn the turn signal, we press the accelerator, we drive to the start. Okay? Have you ever driven a long distance? Yes. Have you ever driven a long distance and not really remember part of it? Yes. <laughs> they call that highway hypnosis. And that is actually what it is. You were in a very light hypnotic trance. Your subconscious took over. You were thinking about 
you know, loop caps or whatever. <laughs> School lessons, whatever. And your subconscious was doing all the work. You were in a very light state of hypnosis. Have you ever watched a movie and something really sad happened and you started to cry? Yes. You know those people aren't real, right? No, I'm serious. You know those people aren't real, right? I'm aware. Why did you cry? Because you went into a trance. You were so engrossed in that movie that your subconscious mind, which is not good at distinguishing between reality and non-reality, only between what it can see and what it can't, thought it was real and made you feel sad. All of the things that happen when you're like, if you sat and thought about it, like, that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why am I doing it? Why am I crying for people who don't exist? You know, in fact, they make a lot of money uh, to do this. Well, they make a lot of money because they're hypnotists. They're really good at what they do. And they have convinced you that they're real. They've convinced the subconscious mind. So when you go into a trance deliberately, when a hypnotist hypnotizes you, puts you into a trance, what you're doing is your waking mind has, for whatever reason, decided that from now on, until the trance ends, the subconscious is going to do all the driving. The waking mind just kind of goes to sleep, metaphorically. So the very most absolutely important thing that I have to have with you to let me hypnotize you is rapport. Because your waking mind and your critical mind, whose only job is to protect you from dangerous input, has to believe for some reason that it's okay to let me do what I'm today. After all that, first of all, do you have any questions about hypnosis reports? Secondly, would you like to try and read hypnosis Sure. Okay. So, there's all kinds of ways to go into hypnosis. I know probably dozens of different inductions. I'm sure you've seen the fancy ones where people do different things. We're going to do a really, really simple one. What I'd like you to do is put your hands on your knees, just like that. Take a deep breath, let it in, let it out. Just do that a couple of times. Deep breath, relax, let it in, let it out. Okay? Remember, you're perfectly safe. Everything's fine. I won't let the bad man get you. <laughs> and we're all going to have an interesting time. We're going to learn something very interesting. So what I want you to do, which hand, are you right-handed or left-handed? I want you to think about your right hand. Go ahead and just look at it for a second. See your right hand. I want you to imagine that tied to your right hand is a string. And that tied to that string is a helium balloon. And in that balloon is helium, which lifts, right? Yes. So now, I can put a little more helium in the balloon very gradually. And I want you to just sit there and imagine. Just watch your hand. Think about that string. Think about that balloon. And I want you to imagine that that balloon is getting more and more helium in it. And it's lifting. And it's pulling. And you can feel your hand kind of starting to feel a little, a little light. You know, that the, the wrist is, you know, your fingers might start to kind of dangle a little bit. Because it's tied to your wrist, so it's going to bend at the wrist. You know, feel that hand lifting very slowly. The helium is just very gradually lifting and rising. And lifting and rising. And you can feel your hand getting lighter and lighter. And I don't know if it's going to be on this breath or not. Or on the next breath in a minute. Your hand really almost starts to lift up off your knee. You can feel it rising. And it's that string, it's that balloon just lifting and rising and rising and lifting. And it's all fine. This is how it works. That's how balloons work. Balloons lift things up and up and up. And I can feel it a little faster now. Now that your hand is clear, and I know it's all going to be fine, I can put in a little more helium a little faster. Your hand can rise a little faster. And lift and rise a little bit faster. Lifting up higher and higher. In fact, I'm going to keep putting helium in the balloon. And I want you to try to push your hand down. Just try to push your hand down against that string. But there's a lot of helium in that balloon. And I keep putting a little more in. And your hand kind of slows down because you're pushing now. You're pushing down. You can feel it, can't you? You can feel the muscles pushing down. But now I just open that valve up a little bit more. And a little bit more. And a little bit more. And you can push, and you can push. <laughs> but you might as well just let it rise because I've got the valve and I've got a big tank of helium and I can just let it lift and rise and rise and lift and up and up. And now I'm 
someone is holding your hand there and you realize that this is actually real, this is very, this is just, isn't that an amazing feeling? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you've seen those people who then go into a hypnotic trance, right, and kind of just relax all, the, you know, they just kind of let go all, they relax. You've seen that, right? Yes. No. That is a really interesting feeling when you're safe and secure. You know, everybody's looking out for you. And what happens is that in a moment, you decide to do that. And sometimes you just need a little help. So I want you to look at me. Right at me. What I have in my hand here is a scissors. In a second, I'm going to cut that string. Your hand's just going to drop. And when your hand hits your knee, you're going to let that breath, whatever tension you've got left, everything's just going to slide away, and you're going to feel so good. And you're just going to relax. Just relax. It's just like that second when you feel yourself falling asleep in bed, it's going to be like that, and you can just drift away. Doesn't that sound interesting? Like to try that? Yeah. All right, so take a deep breath. Yeah. Keep deep breathing. That feels really good. Just breathe. It feels really good. You let yourself breathe. You let yourself relax. And that hand is just stringing there. And a second, it's just going to drop. I'm going to cut it. And that string is going to let your hand fall, and you're going to be able to relax all the way. One, two, three, sleep. Relax, relax, relax. Relax, That's perfect. Perfect. You did that so well. Just keep taking those deep, deep breaths in. And the nice thing is that you've honored me with your trust. You've shown that you trust me that I'm only going to do things that will be interesting and entertaining. So what I want you to do is take a deep breath and think about all those googly eyes that that person put in your car. It's very funny. So you can just feel yourself smiling. Because that was very clever, wasn't it? Just nod your head a little bit. You know, admit it. It was very clever, wasn't it? Yes, it absolutely. So what I want you to do is think about those googly eyes and realize that someone has put a set of those googly eyes right on Boozy's face. Somehow they're covering his own eyes. No matter what you do, you just realize that somebody has put those on there. Probably that same sleepy fellow. He is really good. He has put those on there. And even when you come back to the rest of us, you're going to realize that those googly eyes are on there. Just for a few minutes. Just for a little while. Just to realize that that was really sneaky. And I want you to tell everybody what you see when you look at Boozy. But until then, you're just going to not really remember. When you come back, your conscious mind doesn't need to know. We would move made me think everything's fine. And I know this feels great. And the wonderful thing is, you were such a good trans person that you're going to find it very easy when you want to, when you're safe and secure, and it would be useful or entertaining, and otherwise a good idea to come back to this state whenever you want to, whenever you're assisted by a good hypnotist who you trust, or whenever it would be really beneficial to you to just be able to relax and breathe. Knowing that it will be easy for you to come back to this if you need to or you want to, as long as it's safe and secure. Very good advice. Now what I want you to do is take another deep, deep breath. Let it out. And then listen to me counting. And I'm going to count up. And when I reach the top, you'll be able to come back to us feeling wonderfully refreshed, relaxed, really, really good. So we're just going to go from three, and those eyelids are twitching, two, shoulders are firming up, one, wide awake. Wasn't that fun? Didn't that feel good? It feels amazing, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> feel relaxed.
relaxed and kind of rejuvenated and really feeling good. I mean, I, somebody snuck around behind you while we were talking. I'm not sure what they were up to. But otherwise, it went really well, and everybody was really impressed. Let's give them a hand. So if, if you look around, let's see if we can figure out what that guy who snuck around behind you might have done. Is there anything up on the stage that looks different from... <laughs> Guys, enjoy the convention. This is Boozy Bear. <laughs> <laughs> 